welcome back to my channel where we're all about leveling up, elevating, and living our absolute best lives. So today's video, I hope the audio is okay guys, we've been struggling for a few months, but we'll get it together. Anyway, today's video is about um, getting your passport in Uganda. Uh, it was pretty much the same uh, process whether you're dual or not, but I figured because I'd done all the other documentation stuff, so I was like, let me just do the passport. So, let's get into it. Before we get into all the little steps, I wanted to first mention one brief thing. Um, so personally, this process is for when you're in Uganda. I don't know how the embassies work. I do remember before COVID, before I had moved, I had looked it up and you had to... Actually, no, the embassies were closed. So Ottawa in Canada and Washington in the US were not allowed to issue passports at that time. Obviously, it's COVID. Things would have obviously changed. So please do. I encourage you to go check that out. Um, I've heard a few horror stories in the comments of people saying that it took a lot longer or their application dismissed or disappeared personally just the way I live life whether what country I'm in I'm a very persistent person I'm a call every week so I feel like I have a calendar and call constantly and just be on their case to make sure that your stuff does get sorted because it is very very important so don't leave that in the hands of someone with a guessing game of like I don't know when will it happen but anyway so this particular video applies to when you're in Uganda this helps a lot if you're here for vacation um, usually people I mean, if you're like this far, if you're like North America, people usually take about a month. So if you can get all of this stuff done and then you get there, um, maybe it'll be fast for you. Pay for express. <laughs> so the first step is to go to passports.go.ug. So once you get on the website, they pretty much ask you for everything that's similar to like your national ID. So I just have a little like portfolio of like all the paperwork I ever need, photocopies of them all in there. So if I ever need anything for anything, I just take it out and apply. Take it and apply to the various different things. Makes life so much easier. Also make sure you have a bunch of passport photos just in case, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, so once you're on the website, you're just going to go and fill out absolutely everything. You do need all the information of your parents as well if you are Indigenous Ugandan. If not, uh, I think you just state that or obviously you'd have to be a citizen first so before that then you can try to fill out everything and then just say like na or whatever it may be um but yeah if you're indigenous you're gonna need all your information from your parents you need their national id you need their passport if i were you like i said just photocopy them and keep them a stack of them somewhere safe for future things anyway so in this particular part the only thing that i had to get that was different was a recommender letter um i had one obviously for my dual I think I ended up just using the same one um, and I think they just took it but it was time sensitive like I completely forgot I even needed that uh, but yeah you need a recommender letter that was the only thing I had to get that was different and then um, obviously adding the uh, dual citizenship certificate to that as well I wanted to make sure that was definitely processed in there because I do know of stories of people moving or sorry, traveling back and then they're like why do you have two passports blah, blah, blah. so at least that's in the record and then I always carry in my passport holder my dual citizenship photocopied in here I had the original before and then someone was like please don't do that like if anything happens it's a good point uh, just other countries are so strict with like original documentation whereas Uganda not so much like when you're applying for things they do but like when you're moving around not so much so yeah I just have a photocopied one and I walk around with my blue passport sorry guys I'm just so happy this is finally done I'm just tough forever so annoying so the last step on there is to make a payment uh what i recommend and actually it was um given or advice given to me when i was doing my visa or not my visa but like my special pass um was not to pay online <laughs> don't pay for the credit card option if you obviously are applying abroad or you're doing uh through the embassy then yes but if you happen to be there maybe it's like day two you have all your paperwork you've done everything and you just need to like you know just get the passport um yeah the reason of that is just sometimes electronically things get slow things get lost all of that just go in person and pay for it uh, so yeah they'll take payment it's 250 um thousand shillings and it's once you fill out all the paperwork and they approve you you're going to take that paper to the bank and then you pay there um, and then from there, they from once you've done that, it leads you to the next step, which is the um, appointment. Before we get into the next step, this is a friendly reminder. Please do hit the bell notification button. Please subscribe for more informative information about moving to Africa. So if you pay for Express, you can actually get your appointment much faster. But generally speaking, appointments take about a month. Um, obviously, Express, I don't know how long it takes, but obviously it's faster than one month. But if you don't pay for Express, I didn't. I wasn't on a time-sensitive thing. Thing. I had done this in the summer um, and my dumb self thought that the dual citizenship came with a passport. I don't know who told me that. I must have 
overheard something incorrectly but anyway so i waited a whole month between dual and then actually going online and being like why isn't with like what's going on and then i realized oh it's a whole other application process so i wasted a month but i knew i wanted to come to canada in fall so i was like okay i can wait for the month it's fine so one month later you have your appointment uh, that's when i realized i had my appointment i was like oh shoot it's time sensitive because you get your point once you get your appointment doesn't mean you get your passport that day and then i realized no i actually really wanted to leave earlier i was just kind of like tired so consequently, I was a little bit of a rush. I was like calling people like, I need to get my passport today. I need to get an ASAP so I can book my flight and get out of here and all of that. So yeah, the appointment day is the day that you take your picture. I repeat, <laughs> the appointment day is the day you take your picture. Even though everywhere in Uganda requires you to do an application with the passport size photos, you actually go and show up on the day of retrieving things and take pictures. So my national ID and my stupid passport have pictures where I'm just looking like a deer in the headlight. <laughs> it's the worst. And my dual citizenship. Like, I can't wait to redo all these pictures. <laughs> but anyway, that'll happen when I'm married and I change my last name or whatever. But yeah. Please, please remember you're taking your pictures that day. So look cute, look cute. <laughs> so anyways, once you take your uh, once you do the appointment, um, they are required to take the pictures. They ask you like basically like, two, three questions. You have to arrive at the time of your appointment. Do not arrive early, do not arrive late. Like they will not even let you into the building and then you're just in the line uh, waiting outside of the dust for no reason. So please, please, please remember to only show up if it says two show up at two because i showed up at one because i'm like i know uganda lines and things blah, blah, blah. and the guy just looked at me like no we can't get in so i pulled up my canadian passport i was like i'm picking something else up <laughs> so i could go in and sit because <laughs> of covid they obviously want to control numbers so that's why it's the way that it is anyway so i can't got in did my appointment the lady was super sweet um it was really quick and yeah i was like i thought it was a passport photo and she was like, no, like we're taking it now, like now, now. And I had rushed from somewhere, I like was moving around all day in heat. It was like not ideal. But anyway, uh, so then from there, they basically, you just wait and um, you will get a text because it's connected to your phone number of where you will pick up your passport because it's not from there. I've noticed a commonality of wherever you go and apply for things is never where you go to pick up the things. I don't know why, I just feel like such a waste of space and moving things around, like, I don't know, maybe COVID changed it, who knows. But anyway, yeah, so that's next step. So step three, you're gonna pick up your passport. This is actually happens in Nakawa. It happens at the former Faces Technologies or something like that. Um, this is important because A, you used to arrive at like 7 a.m., like whatever they told you that day, arrive. There's already a line outside. Like, you know people and you're gonna do not respect lines. <laughs> they do not like, respect lines at all. So it's just better you show up mad early, give them the paper, be like, I'm here, and then you can go about your day quickly. Um, the first time I went to go pick it, I was late because I had gotten a hookup. So they were like, you can get your a passport today, today, since you need it today. Uh, but, or I think they gave me a particular date, but they're like, be there at 8 a.m. And then I didn't read that part. And I went at like 2 and I couldn't get it. It was a disaster. So I had to go the next day, which was fine. Ended up getting it and then I got to book my ticket and leave. But yeah, you need to be there super early. So it's right by, what's it in front of? It's some mattress place, Royal Royal Foam or something like that. It's on that street. It's literally, uh, like not secluded, but just like on a side road. It's nice, it's not in town. It's easy to get to, it's accessible. There's parking, but yeah, be there early. Like if they open at, I think they opened at seven or I arrived at seven. Yeah, I arrived about like 6.30 and they opened it at 7 or 8 or something like that. Regardless, it doesn't matter because it won't be there early. <laughs> so be there mad early. So at this point, you now have your passport. You really, that's the, it's a very easy, straightforward process. Um, I just highly recommend like when you're in all of these vicinity, vicinity, vicinities, um, that make some friends, make some friends with some nice people so you can have them as your hookup and your connect next time and like, you can text them and ask them questions because um, it was much easier going that route than having to just do everything yourself. It's actually not impossible, I would never say that, but I get why people are like, I waited six months for a national ID of like, that's insane. National ID I ended up doing on my own, but um, the passport I was like, no, I need an inside person, I need to go ASAP. And I could see how that would have taken maybe an extra, like, 
two weeks to initiate the actual passport. So why I really wanted this passport as well is that you can travel throughout East Africa visa free. Um, I think that was always a thing anyway because I think you can travel with your national ID but like I think they're trying to streamline a lot of things um, as well as just the fact that it's cheaper to travel with an Africa on, a <laughs> on an African passport with visas and stuff like that and yeah just like I explained my Ghana situation before to you guys, but that was a great example. Um, yeah, just really, really and truly, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad that it's done. But yeah, I think that's everything. As always, guys, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to message me. Um, working on the website, so you'll be able to have more access. I think it should be out by the time this video is out, though. Um, if not, obviously, you'll be able to have more access, direct access, and times to have conversations and stuff like that, so I can be more helpful with your return. Other than that, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Please do subscribe, hit the bell notification button, and I'll check you guys in my next video. Me and my blue passport. <laughs> Bye, guys.